How are you doing, everybody? I hope you are good. I hope you are. Edes. Snay. Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast, everybody. How are you doing? I am great, Will. How are you? I am good. I am doing fantastic. You're I am stuck hoping in that my new looks camera like. setup. <laughs> yeah. I am hoping that my new camera setup does not sh- crap the bed uh, during this show. I'm really hoping it doesn't. Will got a new camera set up, but it's not it's it's not uh, not fixing his internet problems. No, no, not at all. We're 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 working. Uh, I look great, and you know that's you know. Arguably, really, mo- most important. that's all that matters. Right, right. Yeah. I'm glad you see it the same way. Hello, everybody. Yep. Welcome. We have many Are things to talk about today. Uh, King Rat, thank you for the so five month subscription. Love to my favorite boys. Aw. And King Shiro Neko, thank you for the three months. And Late Snake, thank you for the three months. I appreciate all of you being here. Uh, so many things to talk about today. Not a lot happened in the yes. in the in the news of Nintendo though. We we yeah. are, we're going uh, we're going to be talking about There's like one thing. Yeah, well, is the one thing uh Kazuya and Smash? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be talking about Kazuya and Smash. We're going to be talking about uh Mario Golf because I played it and I think it's great even though it's been getting some bad reviews. Uh and some other stuff, but first I want to talk about about um some some murmurings about how nintendo is treating old franchises because we learned a little bit about how well we learned a little bit about metroid the other day that uh they were getting metroid dread that we 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 know they're working on a metroid prime 4 but uh that's been on the back burner for a while now four yeah uh, Metroid Dread uh, has Metroid been around Dread, for a long, um, long time. It was first announced back when Metroid Prime 3 uh, came out. It was supposed to be a, a DS game. It's been canceled at least twice. Uh, and now, uh, with the help of, I think, Mercury Steam is the name of the developer, they finally brought it back uh, for the Switch in a way that everybody seems happy with. Yes. Uh so it it's yeah. it's been a long time since since it's started development and been rumored and and it was like a conspiracy theory for a really long time. Um but now now we're seeing a little bit of it. But uh I think people people uh put the Metroid franchise in the same bin as things like F-Zero and Star Fox because they're big Nintendo franchises that have been on the back burner for a really, really long time or at least they were once big and once had amazing games and now, it's not looking too hot. Uh, Did I lose Will? Will is completely frozen. It's not looking good for Will. I made him use a VPN. That might have been a bad idea. Turn your VPN off, Will, if you can hear me. Leave the call and turn the VPN off. Um, anyway. King Shiro Neko, thank you for the subs. I appreciate it. Uh, the gifted subs. Uh, so two things happened. There, there was a realistic F-Zero uh, game. I don't know how they're, they're, they're thinking of making it realistic, but uh, that was a pitch that got shot down. And I, I, I'll tell you what, this? Probably not what the game would have looked like. All right, I'm back. All right, did you turn the VPN off? It is off. All right, you look so much better now, Will. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've learned that just because Bob needs a VPN does not mean Will needs a VPN. No, there's something wrong with uh, the Discord update that you did on your Mac like a few weeks ago. It broke Discord somehow. Well, it wasn't just Discord. I updated my whole system to oh. Big Sur. Yeah. Oh, well, that that killed the Discord. Maybe there's a Discord I'll update ha- you could do or something. Maybe. I'll have to look. It could Everything just be a video be. issue with Big Sur and your computer. Like, in general. Right. And why the frack did I update this stupid computer? I don't know. 
I don't know. Seems like a problem, Will. Yeah. Anyway, uh, according to the Nintendo Life, we could have had a new ultra-realistic F-Zero on Switch, but Nintendo turned it down. Uh, again, ultra-realistic for a sci-fi fantasy uh, <laughs> racing game with floating cars and stuff. Yeah. Not, uh, not sure that's the best direction, but, you know, at this point, any direction is a good direction because <laughs> there's no F-Zero games. <laughs> Correct. Uh, so, the, according to the Nintendo Life, the Nintendo community often finds itself reminiscing over franchises that seem doomed to never return. And while the likes of Pokemon Snap, 2D Metroid, 3D Metroid, Famicom Detective Club, forgot about that one, and more have actually made grand returns. One series that remains on the sidelines is F-Zero. The last F-Zero game, F-Zero Climax? What? I think that was... Uh... Yeah, that was in... I think it was called F-Zero GP Legend in North America. Ah, okay. That makes sense. It was for the Game Boy Advance in 2004. And we yes. didn't have this? No, in America, we got it as F-Zero no, personally, as GP Legend. Personally, oh, no, we, we never owned it. Yeah. We had, I don't think we had Cruising ever... like 2088 for... Uh, for the for... Game Boy Color. Right. And, and I that confuse game was it. Bad. <laughs> yeah. I confuse it for F-Zero. Yeah. Anyway, the last F Zero game, F Zero Climax, launched uh, 16 years ago now and was exclusive to Japan, Europe, and North America. Oh no, no, it was exclusive to Japan. Semicolon. Europe and North America received F Zero oh. GP Legend in 2004, with the All last right. main series release to arrive in the West being 2003's F Zero GX. Sorry, F Zero Climax is the Japanese only sequel to GP Legend oh so we're one game behind <laughs> uh it's hardly surprising that fans of the franchise are getting pretty desperate for something new uh as it turns out there are developers out there who'd love to make a new f-zero for a switch and ideas have been passed on to nintendo unfortunately unsuccessfully in conversation with game explain vitae's guile's a uh, Vitae's Giles Goddard. So I guess Vitae is Goddard. the developer. Yeah, Vitae is the company, yeah. And Giles Goddard is the man who was talking. Giles Goddard, who Nintendo fans will know as developer on Star Fox, Stunt Race FX, 1080 Snowboarding, and Super Mario 64's Stretchy Mario Face. Oh, I did see it. He, I think he was like the first uh, American Nintendo employee or something. Or the first white Nintendo employee, something like that. Uh, I think he might have been part of um that company that made most of the N sixty four architecture. Um, so like they hired him full time. Uh, he has revealed that his team pitched in ultra realistic F zero to Nintendo. At Vite, after I'd left Nintendo and started my own company, it was after Steel Diver and Sub Wars. We were trying to think of stuff to do, and I thought it would be really cool to have an ultra-realistic F-Zero, still with sort of really cool futuristic graphics, but just really realistic physics. We thought that'd be a really interesting thing to try out, like a simulator? So we made a demo for the Switch and PC. Oh, this is a recent thing. It yeah. was also more to show the cap the capability of our engine. We had a multi-platform engine that was running on 3DS, Switch, PC, whatever. Oh, PC was probably a bad idea. So we just <laughs> made a demo for uh, of some really cool F-Zero cars going around this crazy track. Just hundreds of the cars using AI to race each other. That sounds pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, but they'd all have realistic physics, like really ultra, a bit too over the top realistic. So the hovering was actually caused by four jets in the bottom sort of adjusting themselves way too over the top. But it meant that if you killed one of the jets, it would end up sinking. And if you killed the other one, it would flip over all this kind of stuff. And it was just really fun. It was like a sandbox type thing, just playing around and seeing what would happen if you ca caused a crash there and whatever that sounds freaking awesome yeah it sounds like like realistic in a sense of like just the way that a hover car might handle and you know f-zero is a series known for being really fast so if you crash at 600 miles an hour your car is going to be obliterated like it would realistically yeah i 
I mean, I think racing game. Like, I kind of like racing games. I'm not too big into racing games, but yeah, we here at the Wolf Den, big fans of the Burnout franchise. We yes. want <laughs> some some arcade style racing with some crashing. And if you yeah. have hover cars that are bashing into each other, and it ha- they have four points of failure. It's a, it says mm-hmm. here there's four different jets, and if you knock one of the jets out, it starts driving lopsided. That sounds freaking awesome yeah i'd imagine that they put it on pc because they said there was hundreds of cars so that was probably just to show that how powerful the engine was well again like it was being made on a pc first so they probably figured just have a pc build of it right for ease of use you know and then they got their hands on you know switch dev kits and whatnot to i just wonder what, what uh nintendo would think of a pc version of the of the game would that be a turn off for them would they be like oh ew get this off of here <laughs> you know i i don't know because, but um the the original marvel ultimate alliance when it was being made by activision mm-hmm. they actually had as uh, secret characters for the gamecube version samus and link mm-hmm. but because they were using ps2 dev kits to show it off nintendo said no (laughs) that's what i mean i'd imagine nintendo would be turned off pretty easily by some dumb stuff like that yeah even though that even though they're going to be developing the game on a pc using well i mean that was that was 20 years ago so i don't know you know if nintendo would be that petty now uh let's see what Giles had to say, though, when asked whether or not Nintendo ultimately turned down the idea, uh, Godard delivered the bad news. Nintendo are very wary about using old IP because it's such a huge thing for them to do. It's much easier to go with a new a new idea, a new IP, rather than reuse an old one. We were stuck in a Catch-22 working with Nintendo because we'd say to them, we want to do this F-Zero game. Can you give us all this money? And <laughs> they'd say, well, you don't have enough people. And I'd say... Well, if we had the money, we can get the people, you know. So it was forever this ridiculous catch twenty-two with them wanting to make it, wanting us to make a game, pitch uh, us pitching a game, and then and then them saying you don't have enough people. Uh, so I like to talk about how I don't think F Zero could work in today's world because I mm-hmm. I think that the style of game that it was was just too simple and and, and uh, you'd have to like drastically change it and. I don't. I just don't think there's room for like a triple A, like uh, like arcadey style racing game anymore. Um, however, this sounds like that. <laughs> it sounds. <Yeah. laughs> it sounds like the oh, like a great solution for that. Yeah, I. I don't know. I think. I think that you know there is a place for arcadey racers more are more arcade based uh less simulation style racers i just think you know they need a good hook and a good gimmick and i think f-zero provides that um it's just nintendo doesn't seem to want to do anything with it i don't believe uh giles Godard when he says nintendo doesn't want to do anything with their old ip because nintendo all nintendo does is things with their old ip yeah you know? well well, I, I think he means they're really careful with their old IP because they have to, it has to be a banger. A while ago, we right. read an article talking about, I forgot who, another person came out and said uh, it would be really hard. Oh, the guy who uh, worked on, I think, Star Fox 2 and then just read, oh no, the guy who designed Captain Falcon and then uh, recently left Nintendo. He said, um, it would be really difficult uh, to make an F-Zero game right now because it's been so long and it's a mainline yeah. franchise. It has to be incredible. And he's right. Like It's a, it, yeah. it, it's a dormant franchise that you're going to revive. It needs to be a banger or else it's going to take even longer for a good <laughs> F-Zero game to come out. Yeah. Like if they release one that's trash, it's going to be a lot longer until we see like another yeah. good one. And I think that's part of the reason why we've waited so long for a new Metroid, because everybody hated Other M. Um, It's probably the reason why we're still waiting on F-Zero, because despite people loving uh, F-Zero GX on the GameCube, it didn't sell very well. So they're probably, like, really, really scared to try another one. Also, Metroid doesn't sell well. Um, 
that too. I, I think this one will definitely sell yeah, well. Uh, I, I mean, think I'll, so. I think there's a lot of hype around it. I, we're talking about Metroid Dread. There's a lot of hype yeah. around it. Uh, it's the switch has sold an insane amount of copies so a lot of people have one there's mm-hmm. not that many uh triple a nintendo ips like like releasing currently mm-hmm. like like yeah. there's they're they're kind of trickling out there are a lot on the switch because the switch has been out for freaking four years but uh it, it, I feel like every time one comes out, there is an insane amount of hype around it. So I think this new Metroid yeah. will 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 be a banger oh, yeah, as no, long as it's good. Be... Yeah. Uh, but that being said, I think that guy was right in saying that uh, the new if they make a new F Zero, it's got to be a banger. And that's why yeah. Nintendo's so protective over their old IPs because they know it has to be amazing when they finally yeah. release it. But but I mean, it is kind of like it, it's it's an old ip that isn't doing anything why not just let another company just tool around with it nintendo seems to really like to tool around and if they don't like it they have no problem canceling the game late in yeah. development so like why not just yeah. see what happens i guess i guess maybe they think it's a waste of money i don't know because like we said metroid dread, dread is being developed by mercury steam who is an outside company um and they seem to really like working with them uh we've seen instances in the past of uh, friggin uh smash brothers is, is half developed by namco right so you know there are instances of things namco has developed like has a handle like a lot of nintendo games so it, it's not unheard of for that for them to reach out especially for something like f-zero which is at this point is a lower tier nintendo property yeah, yeah, yeah. It's normal for Nintendo to to have other people develop stuff. Even Metroid Dread's being developed by a uh, by a third party company. Um, yeah. uh, I don't, I, I don't know if they're actually third party, but they're not a Nintendo. They're not Nintendo. It's they're, it's, they're third party because apparently they also did um, the Castlevania Lords of Shadow games. Oh, okay. For Konami, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I mean it's it's also possible nintendo has their own ideas for for f-zero that we just don't right. know about but i i think that's uh unlikely because of what we heard about f-zero in the past mm-hmm. um so again i before used to say i don't think f-zero can make it in today's world uh i am retracting that statement because this sounds freaking awesome and it's too bad that uh nintendo said no I think I think it can make it in this world. I just think uh, Nintendo needs to be smart about it, um, and I think they are smart about it. I just think they're being way too cautious about it. I think if they were to release something like F Zero in today's world, marketed property and budget the the game pl- the actual game development of it properly, then I think they could have a decent sized hit on their hands. Not Mario Kart Eight levels of you know hit, but something something pretty good. Well, that that's why Nintendo is so protective over their stuff because they yeah. they're they got the Nintendo polish. They 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 try to release a banger every single time. Yeah. Um. So, I you know what I think now that I think about it, we talk about Nintendo polish and we talk about how Nintendo really tries to perfect their games before they push them out. Um. I'm kind of think like uh, there's a lot of hate on Pokemon. Like p- people, there's a lot of people who don't like new Pokemon games because there's all oh, the tree doesn't look good or or you know yeah. all the battle systems flawed and blah blah blah. And I'm always like, shut up! It's a Pokemon game. You buy it for the cute characters. It's gonna be great anyway. Um, I feel like Nintendo should get on the Pokemon company's ass about polishing those games up a little bit because I honestly <laughs> think that they that, that they're not holding up the polish standards that Nintendo uh, has. You know, yeah, um, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but that all that being said, uh, there is also that we're not done with F Zero. We're not just talking about F Zero when we're talking. And we're about not old done with uh, franchises. And we're not done with Giles Goddard either. This is him too. It's him I didn't too. Even read this. I saw this on on yeah. Reddit R slash Nintendo. I saw this yeah. on there from today. I think. Star Fox's co-programmer says he'd like to make a new game with no gimmicks. I think he means a new Star Fox game. 
Giles yep. Goddard says he would dial it back a lot and keep it on rails. Uh, nice. Now, I'll jump in and say uh, Star Fox Zero loved the idea. Awesome idea. Horrible execution because of the goddamn <laughs> stupid ass uh, Wii U gamepad. It yeah. completely ruined the whole game. And, uh, I mean, I played it at E3, uh, and I remember they were looking for feedback. They, 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 like, you play it, and then they were like, oh, what do you, what did you think? And I was like, I think the gamepad ruined that whole experience. Yeah. Thanks for letting me play. And <laughs> walked yeah. away. <laughs> and it was really weird, because it came out at a time when people, what they make, and when they were making Wii U games, even Nintendo, they would, like, decrease the emphasis on the gamepad. Like, you could just play, like, a regular game. Except this one for some reason. <laughs> yeah. They force you to use the gamepad, and it would have been yeah. a lot better if you didn't have to. And and I think the setup that I was using was also made it worse because I was standing, and so I had to look down at the gamepad and then look up at the screen. So the gamepad yeah. was a first-person view. In theory, it's kind of cool. The gamepad's a first-person view. The screen, the TV screen, is a third-person view, like traditional Star Fox. Um but you aim with the motion controls of the gamepad so moving around the gamepad look at it was it was bad it was very yeah. bad uh it kind of it, it it made it bad if that was a 3ds game maybe one maybe. screen first person one screen third person that might be kind of cool uh but get rid of the motion controls you don't need that for, yeah. for star fox um i hope i got all that right that's at least what, what I remember of it. Um, that sounds right. It sounds right. But I definitely I remember, remember you were game. not able to turn off the motion controls. Yeah. You were locked in. Yeah. Um, but, but the motion controls were for aiming, and you could move the, 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 the ship with the left stick. Anyway, uh, that was the gimmick, was that <laughs> you had to use the gamepad for motion controls. Uh so, the co-programmer of the original Star Fox says he would like to work on a new entry in the series as long as he was allowed to bring the gameplay back to its roots. This is according to Video Games Chronicle. Uh, but, in an interview with Game Explain, Giles Goddard, who was one of the SNES Star Fox's programmers at Argonaut Software, was asked uh, if there was any Nintendo IP he would be interested in working on. It would be interesting to do a Star Fox, I think, he replied, but not how the other ones were done. Asked what he would do different, Goddard explained, I think I would just dial it back a lot and not in gimmicks. And not in gimmicks, like, you know, the stuff Star Fox Zero had. I'm glad I like the, the cut of this guy's jib. <laughs> and maybe not even put in the free roaming aspects and stuff like that. Honestly, in the in the SNES Star Fox and the N sixty four Star Foxes, the the free roam areas, those were kind of bad. I wasn't I wasn't too thrilled to do those. They weren't the best parts of the game, but they made sense, and I feel like you can do those in a good way because that is basically like what Rogue Squadron was. I was going to say Rogue Squadron was great. I was going to say that Rogue yeah. Squadron gave you more room to go around. Right. Uh, and I think that helped a lot because in Star Fox, I just ended up hitting. I just ended up going, hitting the end, doing a little flip, yeah, and going right back. Star Fox was like a, a more confined area. Yeah, you so. kind of do that in Rogue Squadron, but you get more room to play with, so it's it's it yeah. made it a little easier. Uh, so if you're gonna do free roam, uh, you gotta be able to freely roam. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, I would just like to bring it back, pull it back into what made the original Star Fox fun and just make one based on that. I don't know how popular it would be, but it would be cool to try. Well, that's kind of not a good thing to say <laughs> to Nintendo. If you try to pitch this, they want it to be popular. Goddard was then asked if he'd be interested in creating a Star Fox game or spiritual successor with the basic polygonal look of the original game. Yeah, I, a sort of retro Star Fox thing. Um, No. What? He replied. <laughs> I think if we did it, it would have to be either an extremely stylized retro look or just very updated and modern looking. Okay, so either one way or the other. Yeah. <laughs> drastically one way or drastically the other way. 
but I wouldn't try to replicate the polygons from the Super FX chip because I don't see the point. You don't go back that far, you know? We fixed that problem. You don't have to go back to it. I think he's trying to air some grievances about the limitations of the Super FX yeah. chip. <laughs> The last yeah. Star Fox game released was Star Fox Zero, which came to the Wii U in April 2016. Its reception was mixed with some criticizing the game's unique control method that required players to regularly switch their view between a cockpit view and an external one. And I believe that is the end of the article. Yes. So, I mean, I think that's what everybody wants out of a Star Fox game is just to make a freaking on-rail shooter, dude. What's wrong with that? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it seems like the last two of uh, console star fox games last three console star fox games i should say adventure assault and zero all had gimmicks that did not really fit what a star fox game should be and i think you know godard hit the nail on the head when he said that they just need to drop that shit I think that's part of the problem with these uh, old dormant franchises is they want to bring it back and they're like, we got to spice it up when we bring it back. What are we going to do yeah. to, sh to shake things up, shake the franchise up? Also, I think uh, S Star Fox Zero, it was on the Wii U. They, it, it was kind of yeah. dead on arrival anyway. Well, I mean, it was dead on arrival, but the Wii U still had like quote unquote hits. It had Mario Maker. It had... Uh, uh super mario 3d world it had uh mario kart had smash brothers um that's about it but I just, it, it still could have it could have been a big fish in a small pond i just think the wii u was had a baked in gimmick that you were kind of forced i mean at least you know first party games were kind of forced to use it mario maker i think did it in a great way because it was just a tablet you know for, for making the level and you didn't even need to use it um also I, I had a lot of fun with mario maker on the toilet that yeah. was like a big deal because we had our wii u on the opposite wall where the toilet was so i could just pick up the gamepad walk over to the toilet sit down and play on the toilet and i think i also did that with uh mario 3d world but that game didn't really utilize the tablet much at all uh it was just yeah, a lot you of, get the same game a, on both yeah at a certain t at a certain point a lot of games just use the tablet as a second screen you know mm -hmm. i think even donkey kong country uh when you boot up the game it says do you want to play this game on the tablet or on a tv and depending on what you pick the other screen is black <laughs> that's lame yeah i hold true that donkey kong country was not that good and i think that's <laughs> i think that's a uh, part of the problem uh lazy I mean, development i'll call that stuck in the game but well i gotta say for a long time you were looking real good and you were in sync and everybody was complimenting you on how great your new camera oh, was and now you're black fucking, you're just a black star uh, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Uh, and i you got a nice bokeh going on too yeah with that it, f2.8 lens stupid so the stupid ass camera has it has two of uh, auto off features the camera itself and the display you can set the camera auto off to disable so it never shuts off but the display apparently only shuts off after 30 minutes you can't yes. like disable it completely so i gotta yeah. figure out how to you have fix that you have to use it at with the uh eos software or else you can't fix it great because i don't <laughs> think i can use this cam this camera doesn't work with the eos software that's the i don't think it'll it'll work otherwise all right I'll i think you're screwed i'm i think there's a way to like get custom firmware on it though so i'm gonna try that oh magic lantern yeah 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 that'll actually fix it i think yeah i think that fixes it so yeah think about that um anyway uh so yeah every 30 minutes you have to half press the shutter or something yeah in order to not get it to go to sleep right. anyway so uh uh time for 25 so uh yeah it's interesting to see how nintendo treats these uh dormant franchises because they have to be really careful with them because they have to be great when they release them but at the same time yeah. uh i think that they're looking at sales when they look at something like metroid and they're like oh ah, yeah we don't need to really think about this right now we could uh work on getting some third parties and and uh work on what works like uh 
Mario and Zelda. Yeah, I think, you know, they definitely have their list of like, you know, the top selling games. So obviously they'll focus on Mario and Zelda and Kirby. Um, but then like they'll, you know, they'll go to the step below and Metroid is a little bit higher up than some of the other ones. But I'd imagine like Star Fox is pretty high up there. I'd imagine like Punch Out has got to be pretty high up there, you know, and all these other like weird dormant franchises that they haven't touched or they don't re-release in a long time. At a certain point, you know, there are only so many Mario and Zelda games you can make. Yeah, I mean, they they try to, you know, I mean, with Mario, they 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 got him doing everything. Got him playing yeah. freaking freaking uh, tennis. They got him playing golf. Mm -hmm. Um Zelda not so much. <laughs> yeah. Zelda is pretty much just making Zelda games. Um but anyway, I hope I, I I mean the more games the better, obviously. Um, in the past, I've been kind of poo pooing F Zero, thinking that it can't happen. Um, actually, this sounds really good, and I'm kind of upset that they, yeah. that this wasn't brought to fruition. Star Fox, they've been doing Star Fox dirty for a really really long time. They've been yeah. just they've uh, just been shitting the bed with Star Fox since I think the N sixty four game. <laughs> well, the N sixty four game was the last good one. Some people, well, there are stands of, like, Star Fox Adventure and stuff. I know. Well, Star Fox Adventure is a weird edge case because that was supposed to be a completely different game called Dinosaur Planet. And then Miyamoto said, hey, the main character looks like Star Fox. Make it yes. a Star Fox game. So they had to shoehorn in all these Star Fox references. And there was Star Fox Assault, which was uh, half a classic Star Fox game and then half a bunch of on-foot missions that nobody liked. And as we've mentioned before, Sonic Unleashed fans, a half a bad game is still a bad game. <laughs> um, there was Star Fox Command on the DS, which people thought were, was okay, but it was all uh, the open world sections of Star Fox, the all range mode sections. Oh, rip. Which, as we discussed, isn't the best part. Um, and then we had Zero, which we discussed already. Uh yeah, and and then they 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 re released sixty four for the three uh, DS, and it was great yes. again. <laughs> it's still an amazing game. Um, oh, and and you know what? We did recently get a new Star Fox game. We got Star Fox Two, which was uh oh yes, <laughs> it was supposed to be released in what nineteen ninety two. No, nineteen ninety like ninety six, I think. Oh yeah, ninety six. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was developed completed. a long time ago, and then uh, yeah. and you you could have found uh you could have found a ROM. Uh, yeah, the it, ROMs but... were like you know ninety eight percent complete. Right. So yeah, it was completed in nineteen ninety six. Will Will is right. Uh, but it didn't see an official release until twenty seventeen. Twenty one years, years later. later. Uh, and it released on the Super Nintendo classic console and now you can play it on nintendo switch online i'm pretty sure yeah yes you can um it's great I, a lot of people don't like it i think it's good and that's the game that got kind of canned for super mario uh super mario star fox 64 star fox yeah um so yeah i i mean i, I think we'll see some more from these franchises in the future i just don't know how wacky nintendo is going to try to get with it yeah um, I mean, as anyway. long as they keep it simple enough. I mean, I'm, there's, it's it's really hard to screw up a, a rail shooter with some mild free range sections. <laughs> right. You have to actively try to screw it up. Um, I'm gonna read some more notifications. Will, can you leave the call and enter it again? Yes, I can. Uh, we got Fried Biscuits with five gifted. Thank you so much, Fried Biscuits. And uh, he resubscribed for two months. Thank you so much. Uh, Mecha Dragon with five bits. Any of you bros see the Heights movie? No. I saw the 10 minute preview in uh, on YouTube, and uh, one of the characters said chillax unironically, and I, I noped out of it. You, you talking about in the Heights? Oh, absolutely, Will. Yeah, it is. It is not as good as Hamilton, but the the music is infectious. We definitely talked about this already. We did. I said it is, it is the Sonic One to Hamilton Sonic Two. You know what I think part of the problem is for me with these friggin' musicals? 
the What's songs that? aren't really structured. Like there's a there's some of them have a chorus. <laughs> Yeah, which is fine, and the choruses usually aren't that great. Um, and the rest of the song is just all over the place, and it's 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 not the sort of like progressive rock all over the place that I like. <laughs> it's like it's like just wacky and weird, and you can't really follow it. Uh, it, it it's trying to be like more of an opera than I guess a, a traditional Broadway musical, where you know everything is sung, mm -hmm. and I think that's where like there's sort of this disconnect. And everything because it's not you know in a regular song even a broadway song there's first chorus first chorus but in this everything everyone sings so it's not like they can work in a verse chorus first chorus structure to mm. you know everyday conversations yeah it's 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 like trying to be chronological it's trying to it's trying to like have people have conversations with each other and it's like just have the conversation then i'd rather that you just you just do the movie with no none of the music I feel like I mean I've never seen In the Heights the the musical, but I've only I feel seen like, the ten minute preview on YouTube. I mean I've saw the movie, but I'm talking about the actual Broadway musical. I feel like is substantially different in yeah. like a better way. Like yeah. this is definitely something made for the stage and transferring it to the screen. There was something lost in translation. Yeah, something like Hamilton. I feel like would be much better in person. Yeah. Travel says Bob doesn't seem to understand the concept of a musical. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, Blue Echo says with the two months says, "Whoa, Will is in 4K. Will is in a nice crisp 720p. But you can, yeah, if it looks 4K to you, then that's great. <laughs> you you can upscale that to 4K pretty easily. Oh yeah, with one of these guys. Yeah, it's on my desk right now. Whoa, it's Framemeister. <laughs> I never got that new thing. Everybody got." The hell was it called oh uh, there's a new uh retro tank i think that's it yeah yeah it's like the 5x now i gotta get has that. more ports and it does more things this thing i'm starting to not like it too much uh it's it's the uh frame master? yeah i can't get audio out of it at least with the really? super nintendo yeah it's just not audio is just not happening that's weird you might have to like do something in the settings yeah and the settings are a pain in the ass on this thing yeah, if you if you look up, uh, I forgot the I forgot the one guy's name, but if you look up Frame Meister settings for into the system, like there's forums and stuff mm -hmm. that'll tell you what to do, and you can even like download uh, custom settings for it. I'll I'll try that. Yeah. Uh, we also got Khalil Jama who said with nine months who says, uh, "Keep up the good work." Oh, thank you. And Spoopy Girl with the two hundo bits, thank you. All right, now we're moving on to Sony news real quick. Yes. Uh, Sony, from their official blog, they have acquired Housemark, the creators of games like Resogun and more recently Returnal. Uh, so Resogun, awesome, loved Resogun. Resogun was great. Very it was, good it was like a little like PS4. Uh, it came out with the PS4. Um, yes and it was like uh it was like a really cheap tech demo for the ps4 showing mm -hmm. all the little particle all the particles and all the stuff fl uh, flying yeah. around uh that's kind of what house of mark is known for the particle effects and stuff and with uh returnal they showed more particle effects returnal didn't love returnal uh the game <laughs> mechanics are great but uh let a brother save you know yeah it's a very uh now that's a divisive game. <laughs> yeah, Returnal. Yep. You either love it or you don't. Oh yes. And people love it and hate it for the exact same reasons. <laughs> yes. Uh, what was it? Herman Hulse, the head of uh, PlayStation Studios. Today, I'm thrilled to welcome a new member to the PlayStation Studio family. I have been a fan of Housemark since the studio's early days when they introduced Super Stardust HD to the PlayStation fans. Housemark's recent release of Returnal proves that the studio is one with incredible vision, capable of creating memorable new games that resonate with our community. This edition enhances the creative forces of PlayStation Studios, and I cannot wait to see what the future holds for Housemark. Welcome to the family. And then there's the co-founder and managing director of Housemark saying, oh, we're happy to now be a part of the family. 
So, House Mark's first game. Uh, oh no, wait, they were called Blood House first in 1993. A very a, 90s name. They made a game called Stardust and then a game called Super Stardust. That was for yes. the Amiga. The Amiga. I'm just going to stop it at Amiga. Um, <laughs> then, the, then they turned into Terramark. And they made in 1994, they made a game called Elf Mania for the Amiga. And then a canceled the game. Uh, and then they turned into Housemark. They made Super Stardust. A uh, bunch of crap. Uh, Windows. DOS. Uh, Xbox. Gizmondo. Yes. You never heard of that? No, sir. It, it's like an infamous uh, portable system that was like the 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 founder of the company had ties to the mafia and that's how he was able to fund it. <laughs> okay. But yeah, it, this is like infamously one of the worst handhelds ever released. I have never heard of that before. Yeah. Uh, and then in 2007, Super Stardust HD, mm -hmm. uh, which is a PlayStation 3 title, Golf Tee It Up xbox 360 and i think that's the only no okay so they also made they made a bunch of stuff uh i'm yeah. trying to see what their ties are with 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 sony uh outland it's mostly just uh, outland it's mostly just super xbox stardust hd super stardust hd uh resogun uh and alienation it seems to go back to 2010 Mm -hmm. uh dead nation was for all playstation consoles outland also came out for xbox 360 and windows and mac and linux and everything uh but after that it was all playstation next machina came out for windows also apparently yeah. uh that was developed and published by housemark uh so they, uh, they have kind of been a second party studio for uh for playstation for a really long time now it was kind of just a matter of time before sony ate them up um so i guess that means that they liked what happened with returnal it was successful enough that they decided to to put a ring on it as the kids say yeah just make house mark an official part of uh the sony the sony family but that's not all right oh, it's before not. we went live I found this next article that says apparently Sony of Japan might have accidentally announced that they've acquired Bluepoint Studios. <laughs> oh boy. Attached to a tweet announcing uh, PlayStation's acquisition of Housemark Games was a marketing image featuring Welcome to the Family along with Bluepoint uh, Studios logo and the image of Demon Souls nestled among other PlayStation Studio IP. The image was shared via PlayStation Japan's Twitter account and may have been planned for a later date. However, somebody could have uploaded the wrong image to the tweet. The tweet has since been deleted. However, screenshots of the tweet still remain. And here is a here is a tweet from Nabil saying, so apparently PlayStation Japan uploaded the wrong image with their first tweet on Housemark's acquisition. And it actually mentions a blue point acquisition. And, and that's it. <laughs> uh wait wait it mentions a blue point acquisition well like it's well, not it says just the welcome picture to... it's not just the picture so they say it in text they say well, in japanese they say yeah blue point yeah wow okay i was gonna say it could just be the wrong picture some intern was probably like oh yeah demon souls yeah of course that's a that's a first party title and it turns out no um yeah oh wait it says it right there yeah blue well point. that's not just yeah, it says blue point in the picture. Oh, okay. Well, that's uh, that's yeah. that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> blue point is most notable for their work on reimagining classic PlayStation titles such as Demon Souls on the PlayStation Five, uh, Shadow of the Colossus on PlayStation Four, and the remasters of both the God of War collection and the Nathan Drake collection. It's also rumored that they've been working on a match. Uh, uh, sorry, Metal Gear Solid uh, remake. Yes. Yes. Uh, they have experience with Metal Gear Solid because I think they helped with the HD collection on 360 and PS3. You would they be did. correct. Yes. Uh, so they their first game was Blast Factor. 
for PlayStation yeah. 3. Uh, then they did the God of War collection, the Eco Shadow of the Colossus collection, Metal Gear Solid HD collection uh, mm-hmm. for Xbox 360, it says, which is weird. No, uh, it's, it's both. It kind of like overlaps in the picture. Okay. Uh, PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale for the Vita. They did ports. Yes. They did yeah, ports they, and they were collections. A they were uh, a good port house. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, they were a port house nonetheless. <laughs> Flower, they ported it to PlayStation 4 and Vita. Titanfall, Xbox 360. Ported the original game released for Microsoft Windows and Xbox yeah. One. Oh, okay. Uh, Uncharted, the Nathan Drake collection, like we just said. Gravity Rush Remastered. Forgot about that one. Shadow of the Colossus, the the remake. The remake. So a complete yeah. remake. Uh, and then, finally, the Demon Souls remake. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one for PlayStation 5. That was, like, the only... Uh, exclusive launch title on on the playstation 5 yeah uh, although it didn't come out like a week after the playstation 5 launched or something i can, I can figure that uh, out i don't know uh november 12th that sounds like the day the playstation 5 launched yep november yeah 12th. um so yeah blue point is another studio that had a lot of ties with playstation and uh Mm -hmm. i'm a little scared about what this might mean for a potential metal gear solid remake i hope that they wouldn't just cancel that because of the acquisition i hope that they might make it a if they make it a a playstation exclusive yeah i'm cool with that i don't don't care that's fine by me I, i think metal gear has been synonymous with PlayStation, even though it wasn't necessarily, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, I mean, Metal Gear Solid. How long was that exclusive to the PlayStation One? Uh, well, Metal Gear Solid had a PC port. That's what I'm talking when about. That came out. Not, not well, maybe like a year or so. I mean, back back then, PC port, you know, didn't mean the same thing as it does now. Uh. Um, so oh it's not oh microsoft windows 2000 so two years after it came out on the playstation oh, wow. it, it got a pc port yeah uh and also metal gear solid 2 was a uh, was a uh, exclusive to the playstation 2 um well metal gear solid 2 was and the original version and then there was substance which was uh, also on the xbox ah okay okay so yeah, Metal Gear has been synonymous with PlayStation, but not necessarily exclusive. Maybe maybe right. some time exclusive situations. Yeah. Um, um. But well, that said, Metal Gear Solid and Metal Gear Solid Four: Guns of the Patriots have a, especially Guns of the Patriots has a lot of PlayStation specific references in it. Right. Like there's a part in the game where Otacon tells you to switch discs. And then he goes, oh, wait, you don't have to switch discs. We're playing on a PlayStation 3. Yeah, but then Twin Snakes had a lot of GameCube specific references. Right. <laughs> so, like, fair, it, fair they, point. They don't well, really they remade that game completely for the GameCube. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying I'm not sure that uh, the developer really cared so much about uh, the system that they were on. They just wanted to make themselves at home really right yeah i guess um so yeah uh i hope that we would still get a metal gear if it's happening i mean it's good it, this is good news for both house mark and uh and blue point uh this just mm-hmm. means uh they're more official now and probably some more money they, they've already been kind of working under playstation anyway so it's really not that big of a deal yeah. to them um but what does this mean they'll be able to do like their own things or are they going to continue to be a port house are, are I, they just going to do remakes and remasters of classic games? I think Housemark will be able to do whatever they want because they PlayStation yeah. knows they're good for it. I think that Blue Point is now finally just proving themselves. Like Demon Souls was the first like big remake that they got to do. Like the other remakes, yeah. well, Shadow of the Colossus also. Shadow of the Colossus might have been the first big remake that they that they had to well, do. No, I mean, because the Nathan Drake... Well, maybe, because they, they have to completely read the controls and stuff. But the Nathan Drake collection, they got three games over on to a, a completely different system. Yeah, but that wasn't as big of a remake. Right. That was kind of just a port, you know, or a remaster, yeah. I'm sorry. Shadow of the Colossus was a complete remake. 
and then Demon yeah. Souls is like a whole nother level of remake. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think they only recently sh showed what they were uh, capable of. Um, yeah, I think they're totally capable of developing their own game now. Uh, but PlayStation could also be like, hey, we got a lot of remakes we need to make. So, uh, yeah, uh, we're going to buy these people up to be our remake house. <laughs> <laughs> it's also possible they just kind of like Blue Point maybe like made a Metal Gear Solid or like a, like a pitch for it and nothing ever happened with it. That's that's yeah. possible. And that's what leaked. And I mean, that's what all the rumors are talking about. Yeah, I mean, Konami doesn't seem to be in any rush to make a new Metal Gear Solid game or like a Metal Gear Solid game that takes any sort of effort. True. True. And there were other rumors about a Metal Gear Solid uh from yeah uh, with with Kojima involved somehow. Uh I don't know. I don't know how I feel about there that. Were, well, there was rumor that like Sony was going to buy the rights and just give it to Kojima. There's also a game that uh was announced at the playstation event uh for no yes i don't remember uh there was a, there was a game announced recently that uh is some by some unknown developer and everyone's thinking that it's a kojima game like that he's pulling the whole moby oh, Dick thing again yeah because um they thought it was like a silent hills yeah it, uh, it looked restart, like but it wasn't it was it, it looked like something Kojima might be using to like, uh, like and he'll come yeah. out and be like, "Oh, gotcha! It's a it's a Metal Gear, ha!" -ha. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, we got more news. Uh, any more notifications? Yes. No. Uh, it is time, everybody, to talk about Kazuya and Smash. I think he's out yeah. right now. I think he like just came out. Well, actually, you know what? I'll be uh, able we'll to be tell you. Will be available in game starting, yeah, starting today. Let's see real quick. I'm just gonna go to AJ's Twitch. <laughs> Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Let's see. Let's see, they got playing. They gotta let you pin people you want to watch. Can't you just search for him? No. Oh, I guess I could. <laughs> Fanatics 4. He is not live, but Fatality Falcon is. Oh, I clicked on MK Leo by accident. Uh, I mean, this Nintendo Life article says that he will be available starting uh, Tuesday, the 29th of June. The thing is, they don't tell you when. Mm. So... And it's usually around now. You, you know, it's usually nine o'clock. So in five minutes, in five minutes, yeah, there there's you go. potential that Kazuya will be in Smash. Yeah. I don't see him. Yeah, he's not on MK Leo's uh, screen right now, and and yeah. he would be. He would be down here somewhere. Oh, yeah. Right. Does he not have all the characters unlocked? He must be playing on someone else's Switch. <laughs> I mean, to be fair to the guy, there are a lot of characters to unlock. He's the world's greatest uh, Smash player. <laughs> Get all the characters unlocked. Anyway, um, I'm going to leave that open in, in case uh, mm -hmm. it happens. Uh, anyway, uh, Nintendo Life, because you're using Smash. This was the big reveal that happened uh, at uh, the Nintendo Direct a week and a half ago. Yes uh and now he we, we got a we got a 45 minute presentation from masahiro sakurai talking about it i didn't watch it because here's my here's my stance on on these stupid presentations uh i i understand there's a lot of people who are really into that stuff and and there's a lot of theory crafting that can be involved like you see that all what all what the character's capable of all of his moveset and whatever and you can go oh wow he's gonna be crazy when he does this or he's it's gonna be really hard to yeah. counter him with this character all of all of the theory crafting is is usually wrong until the it gets released and this happened yesterday so if you just wait a day the public will get their hands on the character and you'll be able to see what he's actually capable of and how people yeah. will use him in the real world so uh 
I didn't watch the 45 minute presentation because I'll just watch what the top players do with him and and we'll see what really happens. What I usually like to do is I like to go into training mode, play as the character for a little bit, and then I like to fight against the character as like a CPU and see just see what happens. Um, and then I go online and see what happens. Uh, and I usually get destroyed every time. Anyway, uh, Kazuya, the latest fire to be added to Smash Bros. Ultimate as a DLC character will be available in game starting from Tuesday, the 29th of June, probably 9 o'clock, probably in two minutes from now, uh, or from Wednesday, the 30th, for those in uh, Europe. It's been confirmed. The news was shared today by series director Masahiro Sakurai, who detailed the new fighter in a new presentation. Debuting more than 25 years ago in the original Tekken game, Kazuya Mishima is one of the most recognizable faces in the story the fighting game series, uh, period. <laughs> Kazuya moves from <laughs> the arenas of Tekken, where players must understand the space between characters and focus on where to hit their opponents in a 3D plane, to the battlefield of Smash Brothers Ultimate, where players must attack their foes through 2D heights and distances. Because of this change in gameplay dimensions, uh, Kazuya shows off a special skill set in Smash Bros. Ultimate when compared to his Tekken roots. And then there's a tweet from Nintendo of Europe that says, this will be your burial ground. And then here he is. Uh, oh my God, it's his final smash. It looks yeah. crazy. He's got lasers shooting out of every bit of his body. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the character will arrive alongside the already announced version 12 update and will be available to buy as part of Smash Ultimate's Ultimate Fighter Pass version 2 or volume 2. Or as a standalone fighter, only one DLC fighter is still to be released, meaning that we'll finally, we're finally nearing the end of Nintendo character editions. Yes. And then it says... Uh, and Sakurai confirmed that the next one will be the last new character. Yes, I uh, put that in another link, I think. Yeah, okay. Smash Bros. director Masahiro Sakurai was has reiterated that work on Ultimate will end this year and fighter number 82 will be the last fighter. So that's the next fighter. It's penultimate DLC fighter Kazuya will release tomorrow. And here's the tweet from Nintendo of America. It says, the ice cold air of the Mishima bloodline is yours to control when uh, Kazuya releases as the DLC fighter for Smash Bros. Ultimate on 629. Purchase fighter pass volume two to receive the fighter immediately after its release. And then you got little pictures of how cool he looks. Uh, from what I'm hearing, uh, he looks pretty OP from, from the, yeah. from the, uh, Sakurai presentation. Every single DLC character that comes out is OP when they come out. <laughs> They're always like broken in some weird way. The, with the exception yeah. of, uh, Minecraft, Steve, He's got some bullshit, but for the most part, he kind of sucks. Um, uh, where am I? It's it's nine o'clock. I don't see oh. uh, I don't see uh, friggin' MK Leo playing as uh, as Kazuya anytime soon. What the, what the hell, man? The hell, world's dude. best Smash Brothers player, in my ass. <laughs> um. Anyway. I wanted to say something else about this. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, version 12.0 update will also be released. Uh, usually with these updates, they change a lot of stuff about a lot of characters. So your favorite character might yeah. be buffed or nerfed. That's mm -hmm. kind of going to be a big deal to a lot of people. Uh, there was one thing in particular that people were saying was really OP about this character. I think he, I think you just need to, you need to time them out. You need to stay away from him because his movement isn't that great. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, if you're anywhere near him, you're probably just going to get comboed to death because he, he's a mm -hmm. friggin' Tekken character. <laughs> um, so, anyway, uh, I'd like to play as him, try him out a little bit. I doubt I would ever pick him up. I haven't even played Smash too much recently, so I don't know. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how much experience I'm going to get with this guy. Uh, yeah. But th th when they announced Kazuya, uh, Sakurai pulled out a uh sakurai pulled out a picture you know he does those like daily he does those like daily uh, uh smash pick of the day that's what yes. it's called 
He did one when uh, Kazuya came out or was announced, um, and it was a picture of all the fighting game characters like next to each other. Yeah. Here it is. Uh, yeah, it and, was like Ryu, Ken, Terry Bogart, and Kazuya. And a lot of people are kind of were kind of bummed when this was the character that was announced because it's Tekken. Tekken's not like you know, I mean he's a big deal to, in the fighting game community, but he's not I mean, a Tekken's big deal a, to. Yeah, Te oh, Tekken's a big franchise. Tekken's like one of the longest running fighting game franchises out there. I mean, it's just I think it's just as big of a deal as like Ryu or Terry being in there. So it's not a big deal in the circles that I run in, but I know okay. that it's a big deal. <laughs> In the fighting game community and and you know, right the, the, in video games at large, so when I yeah. saw this picture, it kind of put it into perspective for me because this kind of reminds me of the picture of Sonic, Mario, uh, Mega Man, and Pac Man all on the yes. screen at the same time. So mm -hmm. yes, this is a very big deal putting all of these fighting yeah. game characters into one game with all of these other wacky characters going on. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, this is really cool to see. Um, I'm interested to see how he's gonna play. I also kind of like I I've been wanting to play one of these characters with my little uh, uh fight pad and see how that goes yeah. because uh other Smash Brothers doesn't lend itself well to a fight pad like that. But these right. characters typically play as they do in the original game, so that, yeah, that might, it might they were made for cool. a fight pad. I think Terry Bogart specifically might be really good with the fight pad. Yeah, uh, I actually kind of like Tekken. Uh. I played it in an arcade like a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. um, uh, our friend Jerry is really, he really likes Tekken. Uh, he broke a few PlayStation controllers because of Tekken. Uh, and I played him in, in the arcade at round one. Yeah. And I lost the first round. And I was like, we're going again. And I gave him a swipe <laughs> on the little card. And then we went again yes. and I kicked his ass. And then I went again and I kicked his ass. So I won the two out of three. But I did that because I had to learn how to play the game. I've never played the game before. Yeah. Uh, I had to download him, basically. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not I've I've played Tekken, but I'm not as familiar with it as I am like Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat or um, Virtua Fighter even. But um, yeah, no, it's 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 up there. It I, it deserves to be in Smash Brothers. Lenosis in the chat says, "Bob, there's Smash hitboxes for Smash. Make a video." Oh, gee, I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know they made hitbox controllers for Smash. It's crazy. I didn't know Leffen has like a billion videos on it. It's crazy. Um. Anyway, there's more Smash news here. Uh, yes. there's uh Me Fighters. Yes, and they're all uh, wacky and crazy. Yep. Hold on. Uh, we got Dante from the Devil May Cry series. We got the the Dragonborn from Skyrim. We got Shantae of the Shantae series, who oh. also comes with a musical track, and Lloyd from Tales of Symphonia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know who the hell that is. Um, yeah. This upset a lot of people. Yes. Uh, because I it, it means that Dante can't be in the game. Yeah. It, it means you're stuck. You have to custom make your own Dante. And, and also, too, Dante, uh, this Mii fighter is specifically a sword fighter. Uh, and Dante, famously, doesn't just use a sword. He also uses his twin pistols. And this means that he doesn't get twin pistols by default. So you're not really getting the full range of possible Dante moves. Well, that's a kind of annoying. Yeah. Uh, of note here, Fatality Falcon is downloading an update. So, uh, the update might be out right now for for, for all of this stuff. Uh, Shantae, it's pretty cool seeing some representation at all. I think that upset people yes. too because people wanted Shantae in the game. But I think I think yeah, this is plenty. Um, <laughs> and the Dragonborn is pretty cool. Uh, we also already yeah. have uh, Vault Boy, so we're getting a we got enough. We oh, got that's a right, we do. Yeah. Of Bethesda uh, representation in in Smash Brothers. Um, I think Me Fighters are great. I, I thought yeah. for a while, I thought uh, that Kazuya was a Mii fighter, but he wasn't. Uh, it was a different Tekken character. Oh, was there a different Tekken character already? Yes, uh, as a Mii fighter. Um, but uh, Kazuya, I think, was a spirit. We've seen spirits get announced yeah, as, as characters like a, before. There's a million. Heihachi was the uh, the Mii fighter. Yes. 
Kazuya's uh, father. Yes, yes. He looks a lot like Kazuya. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is probably... We're probably not seeing a Dante. I think the last character needs to kind of be a, a friggin banger it needs to it needs to be a crazy like like drop you know i feel like the next character is going to be a nintendo character yes but who <laughs> from nintendo i don't know it's gonna be freaking uh uh magic koopa <laughs> yeah <laughs> Remember when they announced P Piranha Plant? Like, it, yes. it's going to be something like that. It's just to troll yeah. everybody. I I mean, if they wanted to really give it to the fans, it would be Sora from Kingdom yeah. Hearts. Uh, I don't think anybody actually cares about uh, Gino from, uh, from Super yeah. Mario RPG. Yeah, I don't think. A, a while ago, there was... Gino. A while ago, there was that list of... Uh, characters that everybody wanted from smash they, they they held votes in japan america and europe i mean they yeah. probably held votes in a lot of different regions but that was the all, the lists that i saw and gino was only popular in america and a little bit in europe i think it's because it's a fucking meme that that yeah. people watch <laughs> gino and smash the same thing with waluigi but Sora was on the list for all three of them um so I think that has potential, although it's probably tied up in a lot of uh, licensing issues. Uh, no, because it's, it's Square Enix and like Sora. I don't think Disney owns Sora. I think that they might own a little bit of it. I don't, I don't I've know. been saying that there was going to be a Monster Hunter character, and now I don't know because this last one needs to, yeah. again, be a banger. I don't know if Crash Bandicoot would. Uh, would be the banger <laughs> honestly yeah <laughs> crash bandicoot seems like an obvious one but i don't know i don't know if they would do it i really i really have no idea that they could go really any which way but it needs to yeah. be a banger it can't be a dud <laughs> what if, what if it's like master hand i think i like was gonna say something like that like like yeah. that would actually be really cool or or like the or like the god character from like a brawl yeah I think that'd be pretty cool. Like, as a character, not so much for, like, the franchise, but I think that might be cool. Yeah. Or, or, it's Sakurai himself. Now that <laughs> would be dope. Yeah. Uh, we have Fatality Falcon up here playing. Uh, he, 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 he's in the game now. And there, he, there's Kazuya right there. And then Miyamoto, Eiji Awanuma are me fighters. Yes. <laughs> trying to see oh aj just went live uh so anyway uh that's that for for yeah that's that for uh yeah for smash Bros. news i'll leave this up for a little bit uh okay aj seems to be in the game but he's not playing right now uh anyway notification time we yes. got bloody with 10 months football's coming home what does that mean is that are you trying to activate my like uh my like JFK saying? Uh my my winter soldier saying, what do you call it? Anyway, yeah. J CJ Gabriel with seven months. Great job as always, boys. Thanks, dude. Appreciate you. Uh he's saying that England won a soccer game. Oh, oh congratulations. Bully. Oh my god, the combo game. Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> this guy's gonna be Yeah, that's a that's a fighting game move. <laughs> I mean I know Tekken has a lot of hit stun. That's probably what's going yeah. on here. Uh that's gonna break Smash Brothers if there's yeah, oh man. Oh god, poor Falcon, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be I'm not touching yeah. him tonight. I don't want to. Maybe tomorrow. Um, well, what happened with uh, with hockey? I don't want to talk about it. Uh, <laughs> EA is pulling four classics from GOG. No, 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 uh, and no. only one no. will be totally delisted. You skipped. You skipped Mario Golf. Well, I didn't play Mario Golf, so Mario Golf Super Rush came out last yes. Friday. Will and the game. 
And it how is, is it? Awesome. I really like it, even though it's getting bad scores. Well, I mean, it's got a Metacritic of is 73. It? It's got a Metacritic of 73. Because which... I've been seeing, I've been hearing a lot of like, this is the best me- uh, Mario sports game in years. I know a, a lot of like more recent Mario sports games have been like kind of lukewarm uh, reception. It's a good Mario sports game. Yeah. Uh I liked okay, so the multiplayer, awesome. Having a lot of fun playing this game with other people. Uh mm-hmm. there's three different modes. There is the regular golf, which is the best mode. Just regular old golf. And it is not really much difference from regular old golf. You get a super move every once in a while, and that's really it. You get like a meter that fills up and then each character has a different special move. Um right. And that's yeah, that's that's the only gimmick that there is. Uh, then there's the the super rush mode, where uh, you just you just you know it, it's it's a free for all. Everybody gets to hit their shot at the same time, and you run after your ball, and you just try to get in the the, the hole as quick as possible. Um, also, some of the courses are wacky, but honestly, I haven't played any of the wacky courses. I've only ever played like the first couple of courses. Right. Um, this is on screen right now is the speed golf mode, the rush mode that I just said. Uh, and yeah, you that has a lot of weird gimmicks and it's kind of like Mario Kart, how you can like really screw somebody over. And if you're in the lead, uh, the next time, the ne- on the next hole, you get to shoot last. There's like a little timer that counts down. So if you're in the lead, it nerfs you a little bit. So you can get Mario Karted in, in the, uh, oh, wow. in the uh, rush mode. And then there is uh, the uh, what do you call it? Like the like the battle golf mode, which is kind of cool. That's the most Mario Kart of all of them. There's like uh, hazards and stuff. There's like bombs that go off. Uh, there's different holes in the arena, and if you get it in a hole, the hole goes away. So if two people are going for the same hole, and one of them gets it, the other one's just screwed. Um, right. So that that's kind of hectic. But I think the best mode is just a regular old golf. But then there's the single player, which I don't think is very good. There's like an adventure mode uh, where you yeah. like have your little like clubhouse and whatever, and uh, it's not good. I also heard it's very short. I remember playing uh, the Mario Golf for the 3DS, and I I liked it a lot. I remember playing it on a flight. And getting really pissed off at the game. But uh, I did enjoy myself for the little time that I had it. Uh, and I kind of like the single player that more. But uh, I only dabbled a little bit in the single player of this game. There's a lot of talking and I don't like to read. So it's just mashing A the whole time. I forgot what Mario Golf was with the name of it. But I think it's a, it's a Game Boy Color Mario Go- Golf. Uh, the World Tour. No, not World Tour. Or was it Mario Golf? Golf Advance. There was a Mario Golf game that was on a Nintendo handheld. One of the games was color. And people really like it because it had a full-fledged RPG in its single player. Mm -hmm. And I think people were kind of hoping that the adventure mode in Super Rush was a callback to that. Like a a very full-featured RPG centered around golf. Right. Uh, It's definitely not. It's not. Okay. Uh, I honestly I didn't really get too into it but from what I understand it's just it's a lot of just talking to random people and uh, yeah. like around the clubhouse and then playing the game <laughs> um, I'm hearing it's not great I also heard it was two hours long but that seems like a lie I'm looking on how long to beat dot com and it says uh, it says seven and a half hours or if you want to do main plus extras eight and a half hours and then completionist yeah. doesn't say um so i don't know it, basically what i'm trying to say is this game's awesome i might be biased because i love golf games um but it's only awesome if you're gonna play this game with friends i don't think you're gonna have a good right. time playing this in single player uh i saw some other people knocking on the game for other Various reasons. Uh, sorry, my hard drive is filling up again. Uh, I don't know. 
I, I just I just think it's a good time if you have a crew to play with, or even just one other person to play with. It, it it'll it'll be a good time. Uh, so so yeah, if 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 you're on the fence about getting it, I mean it is sixty dollars, so it is a lot. Uh, but if you're on the fence about getting it, you got to have at least one other person to have a good time. And the online's pretty good. I, I know I know Nintendo's not you know known for their best online compatibility, but uh, I mean, it's golf, so you take turns anyway. Yeah. It's not like somebody with low ping is going to ruin the game for everybody. Right. Um. Anyway, get it if you want to try out Mario Golf. Next, we got EA delisting games from GOG. Yes. Uh, some classic PC games, including the fantastic and historically important Ultima Underworld series, are being removed from GOG on June 28th. The games are on sale for the next for next to nothing ahead of their removal. Yesterday, a member of the GOG team posted a notice that on Monday, June 28th at 1 p.m., um, Ultima Underworld 1 and 2, Syndicate Plus, and Syndicate Wars will be delisted. For folks who already own the games, they will still appear in your digital library. However, after that date, you will no longer be able to purchase the titles on GOG. Once Monday arrives, it will only be legally possible to buy these games on EA's own Origin Store. However, Syndicate Wars in particular doesn't currently seem to be available on Origin or any other digital storefront, so it will be near become near impossible to obtain and play through official channels. There's still a chance EA will re-release these titles so, uh, elsewhere, perhaps Steam or the Microsoft Store. Heck, maybe EA gets real wacky and puts them out on Ubisoft's Uplay storefront. But the lack of word from EA about why these games uh, were taken down or or when or if they'll return to other stores leaves the future of these classics, specifically Syndicate Wars, up in the air. Uh, GOG is generally a great way to obtain classic PC games and have and have them all in one nice place. But it all take all it takes is a regime change at a publisher or a switch in business strategy, and suddenly these classic games can be ripped out of the stores. When a game ends up delisted from every storefront, as it seems to be the case with Syndicate Wars, then you have a problem. Hopefully, the impressive Ultima Underworld games and the classic Syndicate duology will return to more digital storefronts sooner than later. It seems very odd for EA to make these old games exclusive make these old games exclusive in 2021 if you're not keen on origin you have until june 28th to pick them up uh on gog which means if you didn't pick them up on gog uh you're out of luck uh i've never heard of any of these games before will you've really never heard of any of these games nope ultima underworld rings a bell but i i, I look i'm looking at it and i have no idea ultima underworld uh i know syndicate uh was one of the the first games by Peter Molyneux was, uh, I think it was a tactical or a, a top-down tactical RPG um, that EA tried to remake a few years ago as a first-person shooter, and everybody said that, that was a bad idea, and everybody was right. It's a <laughs> shit game. Um, uh, I, this could I be remember. because EA has other plans for the, these franchises. Maybe they want to release a collection I, or something. I don't know. Oh, there was that rumor a while ago that EA uh, was going to announce a new game and a classic ip and everybody just assumes it's uh dead space mm -hmm. so it very well could be either ultima underworld or um syndicate doubtful dead space I highly is doubt it i mean I'm it's classic to some people it's like how blink yeah, xbox, classic 360 rock. Is, X xbox 360 is retro now that's true that's true yeah and yeah dude blink 182 is classic rock we're old we're old <laughs> fucks um What's the yeah, deal Ultima with Underworld? God? Ultima Underworld was one of like the first like first person viewpoint video games. Don't that's why I remember it. it. It predates Wolfenstein. Don't people don't developers not like Gog? Because doesn't I don't know. buy like pre owned like licensed keys for games and stuff. No, that you might be thinking of Green Man. No, something's no, up with Gog. Gog. They're they're owned by CD Projekt. So that might be it. People, I think people don't like GOG for some reason. I know, I know that they're very much. Um, 
they're, they're like they don't have DRM on any of their games. Mm -hmm. You download them and you just have them. Um, oh, people were mad because there was that game Devotion that had mm -hmm. that uh, had that reference that was critical of the the head of the Chinese Communist Party, <laughs> and so it was like banned in China. Uh, uh, Sui Kagara. Uh, Kagua says, uh, uh, wait, where'd it go? GOG has no DRM, which is great for preserving software, but also to just copy games around. I think that's why developers don't like GOG. Yes, but I mean, like, everybody's got games on GOG. It's, it's a great place for, like, you know, games you don't really care about, you don't think are going to make a lot of money, you just put them there, mm -hmm. make whatever, you know, whatever money you can. Because like a lot of the old Lucas, LucasArts Star Wars games are on COG. You can't get them anywhere else. Uh, beginning April 2015, GOG.com began to offer DRM-free downloads to holders of game keys from boxed copies of, game, of select games whose DRM validation systems no longer operate. Examples are the Stalker series and Master of Orion series. Over $1.7 million of retail game purchases have been redeemed through this system by November 2017. That sounds great, honestly. Yeah. Uh, FCK DRM initiative, which I think is fuck DRM initiative. Yeah. <laughs> uh, GOG created an anti-digital rights management program called Fuck DRM. Uh, the homepage of the initiative offers links to websites of the de defective by design the eff bandcamp itch.io wiki source project gutenberg and other policies so it sounds like this is a great uh it sounds like gog is great i just think yeah. that developers don't like them because it's 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 potential for it's kind of, it kind of sounds like uh the same reason developers don't like or i'm sorry the same reason publishers don't like gamestop because they're reselling yeah. used games but gog isn't hurting uh consumers <laughs> like gamestop yeah. kind of hurting consumers a little bit by doing that yeah uh, oh g2a well, also, also, is the shady one that that people are talking yes about. yes okay glad we cleared that up uh I'm, I'm looking now. Usually Wikipedia says like, uh, you know, controversy or whatever. Yeah, the only controversy that's on the Wikipedia page is the the issue over devotion. That was for GOG, but for G2A. Yeah. Riot Games sponsorship ban, tiny build allegation, gearbox partnership, product key fraud. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, what do we got? That's it for that. Uh, yeah. That's weird, and I don't know what to think of that. I mean, EA is weird. Yeah, and, uh, uh, I mean, we talked about, like, a while ago when the PlayStation 3 store was going to close down, how they were going to lose all of these games, and people freaked out about it. Mm -hmm. um, this is just a small-scale version of that, basically. You know, you have these games that do have big fan bases that are just going to disappear, and you're not going to be able to play them, and there's going to be no access to them, no legal access to them. Next up, we have this little bit I didn't know about. Will, you're breaking it to me right now. <laughs> we got a Nintendo the Switch, Switch gets a train a... controller. Can't wait for your video on this. <laughs> I need to get it. Uh, train simulators are cool. They're cool for a number of reasons, including the fact that trains are excellent, but perhaps most importantly, those sims don't allow players the chance to conduct them, but also buy a rad controllers. The first Densha de Go was Densha released de in Go. Japan. Densha was, de Ikimasho. That means it was released that means train go. <laughs> released in 1996 in Japanese arcades, the game arrived on the PlayStation 2 the following year. Since then, it spawned a slew of realistic simulators, cool peripherals, and impressive arcade releases. The game got a new release in 2017, Densha de de go, with two, de go. with two exclamation points uh, and it was packaged in a train like cabinet inside there were realistic controls a touch screen and multiple monitors it was a simulator where the point was to conduct the train from one station to the next 
Then in December 2020, the arcade game was ported to the PS4 and the Switch as Bob Densha de Go. You got the Hash Hashiru Yamote. Oh, I'm sen. sorry. <laughs> Hashiru Yamanote Sen. Uh, and included the entire Yamanote Yama line. You got that. You're good. <laughs> Yamanote line and other new content. Uh, dubbed Densha de Densha de Go. Dedicated one handle controller for <laughs> Nintendo Switch. This new peripheral aims to realistically recreate the sensation of operating a train. The levers that control a train are notched and locked in place, and this controller is outfitted with a series of internal gears. This makes operate, operation intuitive and means that experienced players don't have to keep looking at the controls base to see what gear they're in. Instead, they can simply click them into place. It is a very nice, very detailed controller. According to Famitsu, this is the first time in 14 years that a Densha de Go Densha controller de Go. has been. It's the first time in 14 years that a controller for this game has been on sale. Um, the controller looks to be fairly complicated with a braking mechanism and gears to change speed. On the base of the controller, there is also uh, face buttons for easy input as well. Uh, you can check out the promo in the clip below. I'm watching it now. Uh, the dedicated one-handle controller for Nintendo <laughs> Switch will be released on August 8th in Japan. It is priced at 14,850 yen, which is about 134 American dollars. No word on an international release. This is not getting an international release. I couldn't help but notice you, spick, you skipped the last Densha de Go. <laughs> now, as, as Suki Gaura point, points out uh, in the chat, that literally means... Uh, Train, go buy train. <laughs> Densha train, de buy, and then the English yeah. word for go. Uh, so it's a train game, and I still don't know it's what this freaking game looks like. Uh, but it's got a nice controller. There's been a million Densha de go games. <laughs> that doesn't uh, surprise me. Uh, that's crazy. And here's what the arcade looked like damn dude it's like a legit like like cockpit of a train even the yeah. seat and everything yeah uh i want this it, so like the the inside looks really complex there's all these gears and stuff i bet you it feels yeah. really good but it doesn't look that good it looks like a hunk of plastic honestly it does look like just a big piece of plastic it doesn't look anything uh more advanced than like a typical like an arcade fight stick i guess you could say um but i'm sure it's 134 us dollars i'm sure it's got to have some sort of technology in there to make it you know essential for playing this game over using joy cons oh wait i just saw play asia where is it where is it go by train uh oh wait Pre oh. Pre-order. Oh, I can just buy it. Well, that's the game. This is a game. Oh, piss. You you want the? I mean, I want the game too. I wanted to see if the game was on the eShop. Um. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo Switch eShop. Nintendo Life, Nintendo Life, Nintendo everything. I mean, I guess I gotta write it in Japanese, don't I? No, it is in According Japanese. According. According to the Wikipedia for the first version of the game, uh, by the standards of later titles, the game was very strict, very <laughs> is italicized, demanding that users memorize routes. This strictness was caused by the fidelity of the PS1 and PC versions to the arcade version, where it was generally hopes normal users would not play for more than a few minutes per payment for economic reasons. Damn. I'm gonna hate this game, uh, but I do want to try it. That I, I want to try this friggin' weird controller. Yeah. When I, when I saw the headline of the article, Nintendo Switch is getting a train controller. I was expecting like this thing to look like the freaking Steel Battalion Xbox controller. The frickin', yeah. You know the three, the three like yeah. like three section setup and everything, yeah. foot pedals and stuff. And no, it's not like that. Yeah. Slightly disappointing, but uh. And this thing's gonna be expensive I mean, on Play Asia. 
still it's it's rare we see like wacky specialty controllers like this yeah it's so, true i think you know we don't even see ddr dance pads anymore yeah but uh, i think i think a, a train controller is definitely worth mentioning you're right i i, I mean i do want to, if i can get my hands on it i will make a video on it because uh it yeah. sounds like a like a cool idea and you, and you have to do what everybody did with specialty controllers you have to try to play Tony Hawk. With Tony that. Hawk. Don't you back mean Dark in my Souls? day, or Dark Souls? Yes, but I mean, back in my day, everybody tried to play Tony Hawk on a DDR pad. I've actually tried playing Tony Hawk on a DDR pad. It is not fun. I'd imagine. Is mostly because you just drift to the left. Uh, that's all the news, right? It's everything. Yes. Uh, so I mean, then it's that time. Well, it is that time. The tweet of the week uh, was demanded by Will. Because it was just too funny to not to not bring up. So uh, it is Sonic the Hedgehog tweeting Sonic the Hedgehog, a thread. And it's Sonic and then a blue spool of thread. <laughs> yes. And then Roger Craig Smith, voice actor. The voice of Sonic of Sonic adding or uh, replying to this tweet with Fozzie Bear laughing the into a just going ah ah <laughs> uh, that's implying that's a good time it's a bad joke <laughs> <laughs> that's a real knee slapper there Will it's, it's great I love it you can all shut up <laughs> Now it is time for a bit of an unboxing. Um, this what I thought this would be important because we talked about this on the show. Uh, this okay. is just the uh, charger part of the pink Xbox controller that I got. So, so we talked about the uh, what are they call huh. the the design lab, the Xbox design yes. lab. Um, and you could get, uh, uh, one of these, the charge station for the controller. Uh, it, I mm -hmm. mean, I mean, it looks like, uh, it looks like this Yeah. out of the box. You can't really see it. Uh, this is a black one. Uh, of note, it looked like these were these new ones. It looked like they were, uh, it looks like these are the same ones for the Xbox one and that they might be different colors than the actual controllers. Okay. We don't know yet. Um, and it actually says Xbox one on here. It doesn't say series at all. Oh, and it says Xbox design lab on it, but it's clearly, yeah. it's clearly an Xbox one controller, not a series controller. So they might update it later. We might've gotten screwed here. Hmm. So this pink might not be the real pink. This says retro pink. I don't know what okay. I don't remember what mine was called. Why don't you look that up while I'm doing this? I got um, it. Yeah. But the biggest question we had was whether or not we would get the Xbox series style backplate or both. Or, or, or I'm sorry, we might get just the Xbox One style backplate, or we might get both the Xbox One and the series style uh, backplates. So uh, I'm gonna open this bitch up with my giant knife here. So two things. According to the website, it is retro pink. The series one is retro pink. The series, yes. Okay, good. Two. Your box just says stand. Is it? Are you sure you got just the uh, a, a charging stand or just a regular stand? This might be just the stand, will, because it was only twelve bucks. I didn't know you could I, get a whole to yeah, do with uh, it. this. This company, I forgot. I keep yeah, no, you're right. Off. It's just a freaking stupid yeah. ass stand. Yeah, and it is a hunk of cheap plastic. Yeah, because I I have at least two of these for my Xbox controllers, but then I have a charging one that came in a much bigger box to hold the the charging brick and the battery. This is incredibly disappointing. This isn't even cool. It's like a freaking uh, oh, that was the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's literally just a hunk of plastic. It's a good stand if you just need something cheap and 
easy to hold your Xbox controllers. You're not necessarily worried about charging them or whatnot. This was twelve dollars, um, Will. I mean, thirteen stands actually. are like stands are like you know getting expensive, especially like charging stands. I mean, it has to match the controller, so I get it. But like, yeah. I didn't see an option for the charge stand. Was there an option for a charge stand? I didn't see it at all. Where'd you get it? Where'd you get it on Amazon? No, I got it from the freaking design lab because I Microsoft. wanted it to match my controller. That's the whole point, Will. All right, well, I'll see if I can find it. This was a failure. I'm mad about it. Here it is. Here's what it would look like if this was pink. It would match, it'd be cool, but uh, it's not the charge one. This one over here is the charge one. And then uh, the, the, it needs the back plate for the battery because, uh, uh, yeah. And that's why it's really important for me to get the pink back plate so that I can have a, you know, so that it's flush. It's not, I don't have to put a black back plate. Actually, no, it'd have to be a white back plate. Oh, that's, that's a whole nother problem. <laughs> I have a, my controller has a white back, I think. Oh, so you would but need the. the I would need the stand to be pink and the, and the back, back plate to be, to be white. white. Somebody wants to trade with me then. <laughs> yeah. We got a lot of problems. Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, Not I'm very well thought out. <laughs> no, I'm disappointed. Should I unbox this extreme rate stuff? Uh, PlayStation that 5. Stuff? PlayStation 5. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Why not? Just, yeah, fine as well. Now, while you do that, I'm going to look for um, the charge stand that you're looking for. <laughs> Just make sure we're not going to dox ourselves here. Well, it doesn't matter. It's a yeah. P.O. box, so. We can dox the P.O. box. So Extreme Rate makes, like, little custom stuff for PlayStation controllers and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. So let's see what they got here. They hit me up on Instagram, and I uh, answered them and said, yeah, sure, I'm interested, and then I never told them what I wanted. So, <laughs> uh, who knows what ha what's going to happen here. Okay, so these are like, uh, like red buttons, like metallic red buttons. Not the same, I mean, it's a kind of a similar color to this, even though they would have had no idea that PlayStation was going to release these things. Uh, I have another, I have a, they gave me this, you know, this black part on the PlayStation 5 controller. They gave me just the yeah. red piece for that. So this is the same kind of red that was for that. Um, anyway, they gave me a lot of boxes here. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Here's the red for the whole controller. Uh, metallic red instead of this like uh, raspberry kind of red. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know if I'm going to do anything with that. Uh, what else do we got? They have a light kit. Okay, so this is this they sent us this already. This is another this is the thing I was talking about. Um the 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 black part now red. So I guess I can make a, a fully red controller, which would be kind of cool. Right. Yeah. Uh now this is what I was interested in. This is to put paddles on the back of the controller. Oh. Is this a Damascus design? Now this would this looks like a major pain in the ass to do. <laughs> oh, it's got like a blood red design. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm not I know I've seen, away. I've seen like you can get back buttons for a P for a PS4 controller, not the official uh, back buttons that Sony made, but like you can add them up, like it's the third party one, but you have to keep their controller plugged in at all times to use it. Ooh, I don't think this is like that. Th this. Okay. You, I think you have to solder something into the board. It comes with a little PCB and a ribbon oh, wow. cable, and and you need the back plate because it's got the holes in the back for for you to put yeah. the actual. Uh, th th this is the actual paddle part. Yeah, it's this is a complex mod. So, uh, let's see what other designs they have. I'm not not crazy about the blood red. Yeah, because what if my hands bleed? Can then that's gross. Eight at you go to microsoft's website their 
digital all, store all the... and you try to look for xbox accessories they're not under the xbox category you have to go to devices down to accessories and then find the xbox accessories they're not under games and entertainment like you think you will like you think it would be that's annoying and stupid will yeah, it is very annoying very stupid so this is a red one which is cool it's the it's the red that the buttons were oh it's like a really cool red uh, again different than the actual playstation red yeah uh the freaking screws fell out of the it, it just screws everywhere uh, that's cool the at uh, the back paddles are the actual color red that's cool i'm gonna i might do that, that that'd be yeah i should buy a dual shock for this those i'm not gonna yeah not gonna those look like big shock yeah. yeah yeah they look they look very big uh i'll show you what it looks like finished on the internet at the end and they gave me a third one let's see here is this just black this is just black I might do the red if I ever actually do it. Oh, this is a nice, like, soft black. It's uh, yeah. not... I don't have the black one anymore, the the cosmic black. Uh, but it's oh, definitely yeah, yeah. not... This is like a matte finish black. That's kind of cool. This would get my uh, earwax all over it, though. And sweatiness <laughs> all over it. Yeah. So anyway, that's pretty cool. I might do the red one. I'd have to buy a new... Uh, dual shock controller though i don't want to ruin the ones that i have already yeah uh okay. they also have some light so, kits that i want to try maybe i'll buy some of their light kits what do the light kits do just change they those make the look buttons. at the light bar or? they make the buttons light up oh that's fancy all right so the company that made i'm back on the xbox stands the thing okay the company that makes those stands is a company called uh controller gear yes and on microsoft's website they have a very limited color selection the um, the stands you got the pink one mm -hmm. um they only sell on microsoft's website they only sell it in black and it's out of stock all the other ones are 40 to 50 dollars and they're charging stands and they come in a Damn. variety of colors not pink but at least the uh, series controllers come with two different backplates. The series controller stands come with two different right, backplates. Right, right. Okay, so you're saying that there's no colored uh, charge stance for the Series X? There, well, okay, so there is, but they're only for the controllers that Microsoft has already made. Okay, so, 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 so I'm that, not going to pay so that sh Right, so that shock blue charge mm -hmm. stand... The sh that shock blue controller that they made, there's a charge stand for that. That red controller that they made, there's a charge stand for that. And that red controller has a white back. So the red charge oh. stand comes with a red charge stand, but a white back. Interesting. To match the red controller with the white back. So that would be kind of bad for you then? Yes. I would you, have to get the regular black stand. Because you got the red you got the red controller, yeah. but a different back. Yes. Or did you say black? I got a black back, so I would have to get the black charge stand. You follow me? Or did I, I could just you? swap my... I don't care about the back of this one that I have. You could just have my black back. I don't yeah. care. I'll, I'll put a red back on it. Um, anyway, on screen right now, I have the extreme rate, uh, what the paddles look like when they're finished, when they're on there. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just two paddles. Um but yeah, again, you need, there's some modification required. You gotta friggin', I, there might be some soldering involved, honestly, and uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, it might also just be placing a ribbon cable. I don't know. Uh, I'll have to try it out and see what happens. Uh, you have a soldering iron <laughs> at home, at a parent's <laughs> house. I would need a new one. The, that that one kind of sucks. Yeah, this is what their light mod kit looks like it's pretty cool kind of want to try something like that they got some cool little modifications here at extreme rate these i'd imagine are pretty easy uh the 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 back plate i don't know about that that's actually you know what i kind of like this maybe i'll do this 
Uh, oh, there you go. Like red. I mean, this is orange, but I could do red everything, but yeah. leave the white sides. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Uh. Anyway. That's the end of that. I just cut myself with my knife. Oh, here we go. This is uh, another cool look. They got a lot of cool looks here. Do whatever you want. Yeah. That's the end of our unboxing. Uh, now we talk to you people for a hot minute. I got Yes. Pee. If you left a comment on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast, this is the part of the show we will answer you. But of course, anybody watching at home, please start leaving your questions and comments because we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. Yes, we got last week's Wolf Den Live. We got Jack O. Mahoney. Mahoney. Jack O. Mahoney. I think Sonic 06 is better than Sonic Forces. Okay. Oh, wait. Yeah, no, I'm on your side. I need to play Sonic 06. I, I can't make an yeah. opinion yet. Trust me. Once you play Sonic 06, you'll understand. I'm telling you, I hated Sonic Forces, dude. I know you hated Sonic Forces, but Sonic 06 is a very different kind of bad. Tevin Jones says, It really annoys me when people say Unleashed is half good and half bad because the Warehawk stages really aren't that bad. They're definitely the weaker part of the game, but bad is too strong of a word to describe them. Uh, they're bad. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I've been... They're, okay, you know, how about I've this? How about, how about they're just not good? How about that? <laughs> I've been fascinated by this revisionist history around Sonic Unleashed. Like, I saw something on Twitter. It was like, you know people were wrong about sonic unleashed and nowadays people understand that it's a good game like do they yeah i don't know i, it's a, it's a I should sure caveat we had the wii version of sonic unleashed and to my understanding that was not only just as good as the other ports um but in many cases better oh, than the 360 or the ps3 version usually their I, the wii ports was were bad yeah no I, I, this was a this was uh, just as good, if not better, because it dropped like an adventure mode that 360 and the PS3 version had. Um, and you could play with a regular controller. You don't have to use uh, Waggle or anything like that. Um, I am, I have been tempted because Sonic Unleashed is backwards compatible on the Xbox One. Um, and it's usually when it goes on sale, it is significantly on sale. I have been tempted to try that version just to see <laughs> because look i may i have my opinions about sonic games i have very strong opinions about sonic games but i am ultimately a sonic the hedgehog stan and i will go to great lengths just to see maybe i'm wrong about this one i'm probably right but i will i'm willing to give it a shot so the next time it's it's less than whatever it you normally goes for on the xbox live marketplace I will buy it and I will give it a shot. Becca Mullins with said Becca Mullins from last week's Wolf Den Live in the YouTube comments says, "100 percent right about there being too many tank levels in Arkham Knight." Thank you, Becca. Hate the tanks. The combat's so fun though. I love Arkham. What Knight. are you doing to me? I mean, I loved the Arkham series. Arkham Knight uh, couldn't do it. Arkham, it's I honestly don't think it's that bad or even that much of it you know most i mean most of the time you're in the batmobile it's, it's racing it's not no tank stuff there's two racing yeah. levels and those were good i liked those it's it's not it's not as bad as it, the problem is they front loaded a lot of the tank stuff and like that sort of like sours you for a little bit but as you keep playing the game like it's not as much as you think it is it's a, it's a lot and it's bad. I, I I got to the last tank level and I was like, forget it. I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> I don't know, man. I I beat that game several times. I played all the DLC for it. I don't think I think the ending of the game is very bad, <laughs> but I think the game of itself is fine. Doesn't it end with it the tank level? Like, no. Isn't that the end? No, it ends in a weird, like, you play as the Joker and you're in Batman's mind. <laughs> ah, right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Cullen says, Will, what do you think of the new Spawn action figures releasing soon? Uh, they look very good. Um, mostly they're uh, high-quality redos of, like, the original Spawn figures, so, like, the Clown, Violator, and things like that. 
I really actually like the Gunslinger spawn. I might have to pick that up if I see it in Target. I it's think. a Target exclusive, though, so that means I probably won't How do uh, I find, find it before. How do I find uh, it? Uh, Google. Oh, right there. Up, up a little bit. Up. Uh, down. <laughs> this? I have to click uh, this? No, no, not those. There was his pre order now. Okay. Those are them. The Violator, oh. Clown. I like this one. The Redeemer. Yeah. Like, I think the Violator is like 50 bucks, though. Who is the Violator? Oh, this guy? Yeah. Damn. Why is it 50 bucks? Is it you know massive? What? I think it's massive. Action figures have like gone up in price like very recently. Oh, a lot of them like the dramatically. Yeah. I think Gunslinger Spawn is a Target exclusive, which sucks because Target is the worst with exclusives. <laughs> and I had a bad experience with buying an action figure from them recently. Oh, we all know. We all know the story. Yeah. This does look sick. Yeah. Uh, okay, last one from last week's Wolf Den Live. Nope, I'm wrong. There's nope, two. we got two more. Alex says, I love the zero acknowledgement of Sonic Boom's existence. Well done. It deserves as much. The game sucks. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I played the do 3DS not acknowledge one at that game. E3, and uh, it, it it I knew the second I played apparently the it, second 3DS terrible. one is a second apparently the second 3DS game is substantially better, but it's still not worth acknowledging. Mm -hmm. And so, then William do not Wolf, acknowledge Sonic Boom. Oh boy, who, who is not you? He's no, our father. He's the other one. It was all Sonic all the time in the Wolf Den. Hashtag Wolf Den Dead. He is a hundred percent correct. <laughs> yes, there was a lot of Sonic going on. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, now we're talking to you people. Yes. In the chat, I mean, Dismantle OS. Thank you for the twenty-five months. Appreciate you. Uh, Will, did you see this new Saints of Newark trailer? I actually saw it today. Yes, that looks that looks like a, it's going to be a good time. Not a not a happy go lucky good time, but it looks like it's gonna be, um, a good continue. I, I guess it's a prequel to the Sopranos, but it looks like it's gonna be a good continuation of that series. So I've never seen the it. Sopranos, and I kind of want to see this. <laughs> I I not I did not see as much as the Sopranos as I let on. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of my friends like love the Sopranos and quote it all the time, and I just sit there and I laugh because. I don't want to let on that I don't watch as much as they think I do. And the Gunslinger spawn is sold out already. Right, that's God what happens when you sleep it. on a kid. Who works at Target? Help us out. We yeah, used to, we're we're part of you. We used to work there. Yeah, both of us. Uh, any Independence Day plans? I guess long weekends don't mean much to YouTubers, though. Uh, I mean Monday, I'm gonna get back to work, but uh, plan yeah. on probably having people over on uh on Sunday. It's very nice. Uh, I'm seeing. The I'm actually going too. to a friend's house on Saturday to do uh, said festivities. You can't uh, make ribs. Uh, ah, damn it! <laughs> You're making ribs, or he's making ribs. He's making ribs. I ain't making ribs. Is this Kurt? No, it's uh, Alex. Oh, okay. Am I back yet? Uh, you're on the info screen. There you go. Okay. Uh, the non-collectors are driving everything up. They see everything has an investment, baseball cards, toys, etc. Says Clint Greasewood. Uh, you talk about the Vaynerchuk stands. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, maybe. I mean, it's, I don't know. It's everything, though. I mean, oh, a big problem with figures is that you know every everything's just becoming more expensive, and they've been twenty dollars for years. So they got to find a way to keep up. Um, but also the problem is that like you increase the price, but you decrease the amount of accessories the figures get. Like something like the Black Series, the Star Wars Black Series, you're lucky if you get a lightsaber in the kit. Uh Mimi Meme says with the PSP online store closing in a few days, any games co come to mind that you'd recommend getting on the platform? I don't think it's closing anymore. The PSP store is. Oh, Peace Walker. But yeah, Peace That's Walker it. probably. That's all I see. Um, yeah, you can still get PSP games on the Vita, and I think you can also buy them on the PS3. 
not all of them, but like a lot of them. So I wonder if you if you buy a PSP game on the Vita, is it then tied to your account? And you can get it on the PSP. Oh, oh, are you saying you're not able? So this is the store on the PSP. On the PSP. So you yes. can still get PSP games on your Vita after this period. Correct. Okay. Yes. Then, so this doesn't affect many people then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I mean, if you have a PSP and you like your PSP and you don't want to go out and buy the UMDs for it, um, yeah, check out Peace Walker. Um, I've heard the Battlefront game on it is very good. Star Wars Battlefront. Mm -hmm. um, get a couple of UMDs. <laughs> yeah. <he's, laughs> the UMD movies. Look, collect those. Uh, Edward says, "What's what do you think about Tech Time article that's been going around that claims Nintendo Switch Pro likely to support NVIDIA Tegra Orion chip with Black Knight? I don't know anything about this. Yeah. What's your opinion on A-Train all aboard tourism on Nintendo Switch? What the <laughs> fuck is that? It's another train simulator you gotta try out, Bob. What is this? Uh... It, it legit is another train simulator. Yeah. Uh, a much uh, simpler looking one. Well. This good. It would, be, like it, it would was... be ridiculous. It would be ridiculous to spend $134 on a controller for one game. <laughs> this looks like a friggin' uh, PS1 game. It's yeah. all in Japanese, dude. <laughs> I don't I don't know. It looks like there's a lot of Japanese too. Like yeah. I don't I don't know what you want from me. Bob's gonna become a train streamer. Alright. There you go. There's your niche. I'm not listening to any pro uh, switch pro rumors anymore. I think it's coming yeah. out. I think they'll announce it at the end of August and that's and if they don't announce it then, yeah. then we're never gonna get it. I think I think that's fair to that's fair to believe. It's on the Nintendo Switch eShop too. Oh, there's a lot of the A Train stands in here. Yeah. I see. A lot of people really excited about the A Train game. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, Tiny Carrot. Hey, I know this is a game podcast, but I just wanted to ask, what do you say to a girl you have a crush on? Probably nothing. nothing. She probably wants to be you just, left you alone. Just cower in fear and run away. <laughs> we are not the people to ask. No. Um, uh to, still don't know how i got married let alone had a, had a child <laughs> she so. she bonked you over the head and then dragged you yeah into exactly. a house together that's what happened yeah um we are not the people to ask uh m schroeder yeah. thanks for the nine months train sim 2020 on xbox game pass <laughs> <laughs> there Small. was a microsoft train simulator Small dog so, mom says, "Show her your action figures." Yeah, that'll do it. That go only goes so far. It only <laughs> goes so far. It's breaking the ice, dude. Yeah. Ladies love Mountain Dew Baja Blast. That is a fact. That is. That that is that is very much correct. I watched a video that was like ten minutes long the other day. Yeah. About an old like. It's it an old forum post. I don't remember what forum. It was like pre-Reddit. Um, mm -hmm. There's a story about a guy who said, I'm finally doing my dream. I have rigged a backpack with a funnel, with like a like a tube. And he had yeah. it at the bottom of a, of a you know, of, of a, of a uh, fast food cup. <laughs> and it goes into like a gallon jug in his backpack so he can go up to you know the drink machine yeah to, so he can fill up a gallon of baja blast into a soda cup and and no one would yeah. notice he's just sitting there for like 10 minutes having the drink go into the cup uh That's... and it was successful it worked he did yeah. he he, he pulled off the heist heist. yeah it was the heist of the century tech nanner says violator i hardly know her oh tech Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Yeah. That was the cue. But anyway, Bailey Maynard says, Will, are you watching Loki? Yes, it is very good. I like I like how all the, the Marvel shows on Disney Plus 
are substantially different from what the movies have been doing. Uh, I am now less excited for Black Widow because I think the TV shows have been much more creative use of these characters and um, the storytellers involved. Uh, I think Loki is very good. I'm excited to see where it goes. I am happy they introduced girl Loki. Um, and I think uh, I think it's going to be a very interesting, very interesting season finale when that ever happens. Uh, now, I was talking to our friend Mike. I have not yes. watched any Marvel shows. Okay. He said, just watch Loki. <laughs> like, skip the other ones. Well, would you agree? No. Um, I mean, if you want to save time, then yes, just, just start watching Loki. Um, if you liked the Captain America movies, you'll I love did. Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It's just right up there with those. And it does some interesting things with, uh, you know, Sam's relationship to Captain America uh bucky's history um how it all merges together it's very good um wandavision is very creative and very inventive and i'm surprised that they were able to do what they did with uh established characters that usually big companies are very protective over mm -hmm. so um so they made them i would say is what you're saying yes <laughs> okay cool i like that um, there's another thing in the chat. Oh yeah, M. Schroeder, that was nine months. Thank you. I missed that. That you, your comment came with nine months. Um, there's another one I wanted to read. Oh, what do you think about physical Switch games coming with a uh, download code? I think that sucks when you get a physical copy yeah. of the game and instead of a cartridge, it's just a download code. It's, it's just like a bait and switch. It's like a waste of plastic. It has to say it's, on the box, download code. And I think they all do. It does. Overwatch does that. Yeah. So, I mean, in that, yeah. in that case, you are you already know that. Uh, it's it's different because I know some games, like, half of the game is on the cart and you have to download the rest. Because mm -hmm. they, they physically can't fit all the data on the cart. It was That's like one that thing. with the Mega Man Legacy Collection. Yeah. I think, I think the um, next one. The Resident Evil Triple Pack that I have. The only game that's on the cart is Resident Evil 4. You have to download 5 and 6. That's um, annoying. Yeah. But that's that said, that's better than just shipping a blank case. Because you're basically paying $50 for a case. So that's a Capcom thing. And I remember when it was uh, when it, when it happened with uh, uh, Mega Man, they could have put all of it on the cartridge. They just opted to get a cheaper cartridge for some reason. Well, well, no, because um, in Mega Man, half the game's still on the cart, and you have to download the rest, right? Yes, but I I'm saying that they I'm, could have I'm fit it about, all on the cart. That right. They just decided I'm not to. More specifically, about a game like Overwatch, right? That it doesn't even ship a cart in the case, right? You are essentially buying a piece of paper with a download code on it. Yes. At that point. Just download the game from the eShop like you normally would. Correct. That I have a problem with more so than, you know, you buy half the game on the cart and the rest you have to download. Because at least you're getting something. I I think it's stupid to buy a physical copy of a game that has a download code in it. Like uh, like Overwatch. Just yeah. At least you're getting a warning like, okay, I shouldn't buy the physical because there's nothing in here. Um but I think Capcom is stupid for giving you half and half because most of, I th I'm pretty sure they just opted to not give you the game on the cartridge for some, not give you half the game for some reason. There's like, there was, I remember when Mega Man came out, there was no reason for them to do what they did. Yeah. Uh, maybe they I mean, were Resident just Evil made me because like, those are, those are bigger games than Mega Man. Right. But. Uh, anyway, I got to pee. Thanks for hanging out. Everybody. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for 
any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast, so you can go watch us on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, though, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolfden Podcast, your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. And it'll make me look good to the people at New York Comic Con who uh, are approved the press pad, the press badge <laughs> uh, applications. Because I just applied for one, and I hope they see this and know that I I want to go. Mega Man X Legacy Collection One is three gigabytes, and the mm-hmm. and two is six point six gigabytes, and the physical copy is one and two, so in total okay. nine point six gigabytes. No that reason at all not to yeah. put it on a cartridge. Very stupid. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for hanging out, everybody. I'll be live definitely Thursday. Maybe if you're lucky, Wednesday. But I am working on a video. So chances are no. Uh, we got some good content over on youtube.com slash Wolfden Clips. Uh, Mario Golf video went up yesterday. It is a fun time. Uh, it's with uh, Dan, AJ, and Scoot and sometime soon like probably tomorrow or thursday there'll be another one up with wood and misclick uh anyway appreciate you being here please watch aj right now uh because he is playing kazuya in smash and he i think he's got an open arena going on right now he just opened it oh there you go uh, i think anyway unless he's waiting for somebody so go over there and say hi to AJ for us, and we will see you another time. Goodbye. Bye.